Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. lies only a few miles from us tonight. Tonight he must feel good as he looks down upon us. We sit here together, a rainbow a coalition, the sons and daughters of slave masters and the sons and daughters of slaves sitting together around the common table to decide the direction of our party and our country. His heart would be full tonight as a testament to the struggles of those who have gone before, as a legacy for those who will come after, as a tribute to the endurance, the patience, the courage of our forefathers and mothers, as an assurance that their prayers are being answered, that their work has not been in vain, and the hope is eternal tomorrow night my name will go in nomination for the presidency of the United States of America. Another daughter of the South captured the attention of the nation with her stirring testimony about the pains and struggles of blacks in this country. Her name was Fannie Lou Hamer. Her words at this convention 24 years ago, her struggle for poor blacks and poor whites, and her vision of a freer, braver, more prosperous America gave birth to the reforms that have made it possible for everyone to play a role in this party and for me to be able to stand here with you tonight. Fabulous <laughs> appeal to the conscience of this nation is one of the reasons another daughter from the South will keynote this convention tonight, a convention that brings together in the spirit of unity 
a son of immigrants and a descendant of slaves. Fannie Lou was a prophet of freedom. Our speaker tonight can be aptly called a voice of the future, an eloquent voice who expresses the basic beliefs of our party and of our democracy. Her name is Ann Richards. This evening, because after listening to George Bush all these years, I figured you needed to know what a real Texas accent sounds like. I want to announce to this nation that in a little more than 100 days, the Reagan, Meese, Deaver, Nofziger, Poindexter, North, Weinberger, Watt, Gorsuch, Lavelle, Stockman, Haig, Bork, Noriega, George Bush will be over. And I think one of the saving graces of Democrats is that we are candid. We talk straight talk. We tell people what we think, and that tradition and those values live today in Michael Dukakis from Massachusetts. And we believe that America must have leaders who show us that our struggles amount to something and contribute to something larger leaders who want us to be all that we can be. We want leaders like Jesse Jackson. <laughs> Jesse Jackson is a leader and a teacher who can open our hearts and open our minds and stir our very souls. And he has taught us that we are as good as our capacity for caring. Caring about the drug problem. Caring about crime caring about education, and caring about each other. because I think, in a sense, we're going to fight and try to compromise with the Dukakis people. That's what we're trying to do right now is pinpoint people we can lobby with in each delegation and see if we can bring them over to uh, vote for our minority blanks and possibly gain some, uh, some type of concession that way. I've been pretty angry throughout the week, uh, through, actually through the last couple of weeks of the campaign. I think that the, the, our candidate, Jesse Jackson, and the, uh, the Jackson campaign has been treated disrespectfully. I also think that the, uh, the leadership of the Democratic Party and the Dukakis campaign has really uh, turned their backs on us, on our issues and, and everything that we stand for. Party can bring 
itself to include more people who are loyal to it. I think one thing the Democratic Party needs to do is define the rules that they use to select the vice president. At this point, we're not really sure which minority reports are going to go on the floor. We filed 13 minority reports from the Jackson campaign. They're all still being negotiated, I understand, with the Dukakis campaign. The expectation is at least four or five of them will come to the floor, and the expectation is we'll probably lose them all, because the numbers are real clear here that, that the Dukakis people are in, in charge. First and probably the most contentious and difficult issue is the Palestinian uh, homeland issue. Uh, that probably has the potential for being the most destructive uh, in the, within the Democratic Party of all the issues being discussed today. Uh, the Jackson people, as I'm sure all of you have seen, uh, have agreed that uh, what ought to be done is a debate of that issue. Those are things that, uh, you know, difficult issues ought to be out there, ought to be discussed. But there will not be a vote, uh, or they're not going to ask for a vote on the Palestinian issue. Secondly, on the, uh, on the revenue issue, uh, everybody in this room uh, knows that uh, no matter who gets elected, revenues are going to get raised, right? I mean, no matter what happens, we all know that. And we all know that in the last, uh, <laughs> we all know that in the last eight years, uh, Ronald Reagan has raised revenues six times. I mean, let's remember that as well. Ronald Reagan has raised revenues six <laughs> times in the last eight years, most recently just a month ago on the catastrophic health insurance program. The third issue on uh, defense expenditures, I think almost every Democrat agrees that long term what we want to do is to be moving <laughs> down the curve rather than up the curve, certainly a dramatic difference with what the Reagan people have done uh, and what Bush will continue to do. In terms of philosophy on defense, we want to join the Soviet Union in agreements and bring that level down, but that's got to be done through these very tortuous negotiations, and uh, that's going to be one of the major mandates that the American people will give to Dukakis in November. Finally, on first strike, I will tell you that it, uh, I have a great deal of difficulty with a lot of the uh, theory and a lot of the, there it's sort of like uh, medieval monks, how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. Uh, in discussions of nuclear doctrine. The thing that concerns me is that this Democratic Convention should stand up before the world and say that we won't take a position that is no first use. That's got to be interpreted by the world as saying we will, uh, we are open to first use. We can't afford to do that. A no first use plank might have served a useful purpose in the evil empire days, before INF, before START, before Gorbachev, before Dukakis. But I respectfully oppose the substitute plank now because premature declarations about our intentions in wartime could disrupt present progress and will not advance what's missed must be our number one goal, ending the arms race before it ends us. Historians may debate whether it was justifiable to use nuclear weapons in 1945 when 80,000 lives were taken in an instant. Historians may debate whether it was justifiable in the 1950s for John Foster Dulles to offer American nuclear weapons to the French when their forces were surrounded in what was then called Indochina. But in light of today's scientific knowledge, there will be no historians to debate the outcome of the next war. Therefore, as Democrats, we can no longer justify a policy in which a U.S. president would start such a holocaust. We all share one objective to prevent any use of any nuclear weapons. But we have to give President Dukakis the flexibility that this platform now provides so that he can work with our NATO allies to reduce both nuclear and conventional weapons in Europe. Michael Dukakis stands with all of us to stop the nuclear madness that threatens to destroy this planet. Let us stand together with him to give him the platform that he needs to ensure that we can reduce both nuclear and conventional weapons, not just in Europe, but across this planet. Let us ensure that this moment was a statement that we gave to Mike Dukakis. Let us vote no on the minority plank 
and support Michael Dukakis of Massachusetts. Our failure to renounce the first use of nuclear weapons is a failure to make the moral choice for our children's future, for our species, and indeed for all life on this earth. It is time for the Democratic Party to respond by seizing the hearts, the minds, and the attentions of the American majority that is ready to renounce forever our insane spiraling of the nuclear arms race, ready to renounce forever our option to begin a nuclear war, and ready to claim forever our rightful place in the leadership of world peacemaking. Let each of us vote our conscience. This issue can unite us all. No first use. It is a matter of such deep conscience that I don't have a sense that we should be politically whipped on it. And I say that as someone who, you know, supports the caucus and I understand all the subtleties of the issues Jeff has raised. Uh, it happens to be bigger than Tell this us convention. Tell how you feel as the chairman about it. Uh, I, I, mean, is I have lived a lifetime opposed to any first use position by this time. Uh, it just seems to me almost irrational, and I really hope that everybody will be very open to this issue tonight on the floor, because I really think it makes uh, all the sense in the world for us to, 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 to all, as, 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 a, as a group, as a party, to take that position. Yes, boy. I move that we should be opposed to no first use. I make that motion, Mr. Chairman. I second it. All those in favor of the motion is made by Reverend Boyd and appropriately seconded that Colorado uh, support a no first use position as a delegation. Say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 Uh, the ayes have so carried. Um, All right. <laughs> Last night we were uh, in session to uh, talk about where we were on the platform. You know that uh, Odell Berry and Bill Sterling have been serving as whips. Uh, we met last night um, with all the whips and all the state chairs, and uh, they had spent all day yesterday discussing the 13 uh, contested minority platforms. And that's the comprehensive budget proposal, increasing support for education, providing prenatal care, WIC and Head Start, health care, um, self-determination for offshore territories, that's the Virgin Islands issue, Lebanon and the Persian Gulf, nuclear testing beyond the Cold War, and Central America. The, the things that have been accepted have been amplified. You know, they've taken out all of the wording that would have made them controversial. They're as American as apple pie, and no. they, they ought not have ever been let me, to the let point me, of argument. What Ryan said you know? was this. Never before have we, an action-type group, ever been included, period. Mm -hmm. That's true. Now, we have made a significant movement, Mr. Tate, as far as this revolution is concerned, <laughs> to be a part of significantly uh, in terms of the agenda. There's going to be a lot of pressure on us not to keep debating these issues on the floor, and they'll say that if we keep debating them, Jesse won't have his time on national television. If we have to compromise, we do want a position established on the Middle East. Okay, and, so, and so that should be a part of the negotiation. If we don't get it this time, that there will be a position taken on the Middle East. Peace in the Middle East is too important to be left without a principal debate. Our party has been long committed to Israeli security and peace for the Israeli people. But security and peace for Israel cannot be achieved without recognition of Palestinian rights. Our minority plank is important to consider. The platform as it currently is worded is inadequate precisely because it does not address the issue of Palestinian rights. Instead, it falls short by focusing on the failed policy of the Camp David Accords. We've heard a lot about the need for peace in the Middle East for the last few minutes. I ask you, who wants peace more? 
than a mother who lost her son in a war meant to obliterate the state of Israel? Who wants peace more than a grandmother who survived the Holocaust only to see her grandchild lose both arms to a PLO bomb? Who wants peace more than Israeli teenagers, young men and young women, who must sacrifice at least three years of their lives defending their homes from an enemy sworn to pushing them and all of their fellow citizens into the sea. No one in the world wants peace more than the Israelis. We all know that there is one reason, and one reason alone why there is not peace in the Middle East. The intransigence of Israel's Arab neighbors and the Palestinian organizations their unwillingness to follow the example of Anwar Sadat and extend the hand of peace and recognize Israel's right to exist once and for all. After four wars with many deaths on all sides and after 20 years of an occupation which many at its start had hoped would end swiftly, and after thousands of Palestinian and Israeli deaths, we must speak out for the equal and legitimate rights of Palestinians to peace, security, and self-determination. I am as concerned about death in the Middle East and the brutality that's going on there as most other people, but I'm not sure that the solution is another kind of partition because I think that's what this mess grew out of. This is one of those issues that is a strong issue that we should have taken a stand on if 70% of the delegates at this convention are in support of that issue, this should have been an issue that we did not compromise on. We also have our individual voices as delegates, and we have our individual concerns, and I agree with Benita, we need to address the Middle East issue. Um, as a delegation uh, from Colorado. We're dealing with, with a party that has really effectively locked us out for many, many years. And to get this far and to get this many delegates at this convention, was really quite an accomplishment. And I, I think that we can't just look at only this convention, but we have to look towards the future. Right? And I think that the mandate that was laid out yesterday, that we have to go back, not just you know fight for Jesse on the floor, not just fight for our platform issues, but go back and change yeah. the very fabric. That's what we can I was pretty disappointed in the response of the Dukakis people that I know are supportive and who support Jesse and who support um, Jesse's Jesse's uh, platform. But I believe that they felt as though they should go along with the, the candidate they were here supporting, even though it was against their conscience. I was very sorry to see first use not be adopted um, in Minnesota. That's part of our Democratic platform, and to see it not extended to a national platform is disconcerting. I'm not sure why we think that we can. Uh, continue uh, increasing our military strength, or where we're going to get the money to uh, pay for the services that we need. We were happy that there was that Jackson Camp was able to work out some of the issues in the platform, but it was quite clear that we weren't happy with the vote that came down for the issue around taxes or no first use. And I particularly uh, have a commitment to no first use. So it was very disappointing that this particular convention would not support that overwhelmingly and demonstrate to the world the Democrats are against first use. I was very sorry that a vote was not taken on the uh, Mideast resolution because had it been taken, I thought that um, it would have failed resoundingly and that would have resolved the issue. I've always been uh, busy getting people to register and vote, but when Jesse came around for the primaries, I felt as though it was time for me to put in uh, more involvement. Shields, North Dakota, it's a village where there are 12 of us who live, and since I'm here, I guess 8% of the population is gone. But we are the only two rural candidates in North Dakota, she and I. America's not a blanket woven from one thread, one color, one cloth. When I was a child growing up in Greenville, South Carolina, 
and grandmama could not afford a blanket she didn't complain and we did not freeze instead she took pieces of old cloth patches wool silk gabardine croker sack on the patches barely good enough to wipe off your shoes with but they didn't stay that way very long to stir the hands and a strong cord she sewed them together into a quilt a thing of beauty and power and culture now democrats we must build such a quilt farmers you seek fair prices and you are right but you cannot stand alone your patch is not big enough workers you fight for fair wages you're right but your patch labor is not big enough women you seek comparable worth and pay equity you're right but your patch is not big enough women mothers who seek head start and daycare and prenatal care on the front side of life rather than jail care and welfare on the back side of life you're right but your patch is not big enough students you seek scholarships you're right but your patch is not big enough blacks and hispanics when we fight for civil rights we are right but our patch is not big enough gays and lesbians when you fight against discrimination and a cure for aids you are right but your patch is not big enough conservatives and progressives when you fight for what you believe right wing left wing hawk dove you are right from your point of view but your point of view is not enough but don't despair be as wise as my grandmama pull the patches and the pieces together bound by a common thread when we form a great quilt of unity and common ground we'll have the power to, to bring about health care and housing and jobs and education and hope to our nation America must never surrender to malnutrition we can feed the hungry and clothe the naked we must never surrender we must go forward we must never surrender to illiteracy invest in our children never surrender and go forward we must never surrender to inequality women cannot compromise era or comparable worth women are making 60 cents on the dollar to what a man makes women cannot buy meat cheaper women cannot buy bread cheaper women cannot buy milk cheaper women deserve to get paid for the work that you do it's right and it's fair don't surrender my friends those who have aids tonight you deserve our compassion even with aids you must not surrender in your wheelchairs i see you sitting here tonight in those wheelchairs but even in your wheelchairs don't you give up we cannot forget 50 years ago when our backs were against the wall roosevelt was in a wheelchair i would rather have roosevelt in a wheelchair than reagan and bush on a horse don't you surrender and don't you give up every one of these funny labels they put on you those of you who are watching this broadcast tonight in the projects on the corners i understand call you outcast low down you can't make it you're nothing you're from nobody subclass underclass when you see jesse jackson when my name goes in nomination your name goes in nomination i was born in the slum but the slum was not born in me and it wasn't born in you and you can make it wherever you are tonight you can make it hold your head high stick your chest out you can make it it gets dark sometimes but the morning comes don't you surrender suffering breeds character 
have to preach faith. In the end, faith will not disappoint. You must not surrender. You may or may not get there, but just know that you are qualified and you hold on and hold out. We must never surrender. America will get better and better. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive on tomorrow night and beyond. Keep hope alive. I love you very much. I love you very much. to everything he was saying. I feel that the only way that America is going to be uh, free is to understand and follow the guidance of our great leader, the one and only Reverend Jesse Jackson. I think that Jesse Jackson uh, uh, did the single most uh, beneficial thing for the Democratic Party that's, that's happened in this election year, and I think uh, History indeed was made tonight, and I think we'll be talking about this after November when the Democrats win the election. I view this as the beginning, not the end, because that's clearly what Jesse is signaling to us, and the response of the crowd was wonderful. In and one fairness. Of, and one of our uncommitted delegates came up to us afterwards and hugged us and said she was no longer uncommitted. Actually, it's not the beginning, because he's it's bringing the, Rosa Parks right. out. That's show true. that it's actually just a step. It was certainly established that this man truly uh, is a genius and is, has the capacity to provide the kind of leadership uh, that this country needs. And it is absolutely a disgrace to the Democratic Party that uh, he is not the nominee. I was disappointed about a lot of the uh, platform issues and the way they worked out. But yet, um, Having Jesse on the floor and having him speak as directly and as long as he did and as frankly and sincerely was absolutely wonderful. And, and so I feel really quite buoyed right now about the prospects over the next, next four years of building the Rainbow Coalition. I was real glad there wasn't an altar call where I'd have been right down there. You <laughs> have your chance tonight. <laughs> The afterglow of that speech uh, lives on with all of us. I just have a couple of thoughts. Uh, one is it's going to take more than money to elect Michael Dukakis. You can say amen. amen. It will be people like you and I who have to get inspired to go back and do that work. I've been in Colorado 10 years, and I've watched the same, same six or seven black people or Chicanos be included in the process. We must make room for all of us, and it's beyond lip service. It's beyond game plan, and a lot of little liberal smiles that go around to those of us who have been historically locked out. We need to be in on the decisions that are made, and when the pie is cut, we need to be right in the middle of the process of cutting the pie. Throughout all this campaign, my heart was on the right place, and the, that place was with the Jesse Jackson. And I want to... <laughs> if I was the man who was looking for the life where the experience, maybe greater success, maybe inclusion in the higher powers, I could have come out and support Dukakis. But I never have done that. I have done always what I thought is really right to do. It is what, is what I feel in my heart, and what I can relate to it. And Jesse and his dreams and his work and what he said last night is the kinds of the things that really I believe very deeply about. Thank you. The person who may feel threatened by the Rainbow Coalition we got to help them not feel threatened because uh, traditionally people have felt, well, that Rainbow Coalition is going to take from me. I think Jesse made it very plain, and we need to underscore it, that when that 25% of America gets able 
empowered to make a contribution, then there's more for everybody. Now, if the Rainbow Coalition can be empowered to be an effective part of the, you know, the workplace of America, hey, there's more security. And that is a very key word if you look at all the polls. There's a lot of folks out there who say, well, I got it, but I don't know if it's going to stay. <coughs> the word security is really anxious. And the Rainbow Coalition, unfortunately, challenges some people on that security. It ought not. They ought to feel more secure. And I think it's up to us to make that connection when we get back home. <laughs> Best t-shirt out here, right here. sound like he mm. may have sold out a little bit. Why do you say that? Because it, some of his issues that, that, that could bring peace in the world wasn't mentioned in the speech. Ma mainly one about the Middle East. I guess Dukakis wasn't going to surrender of having a Palestinian state, which, it would, which I believe would settle a lot of stuff that's going on in the Middle East. Palestinians just want to have their right to be in their own homeland. But that's only my opinion. And I think Jesse sold out on that point. That's about it. Though he made other great points, so let's not look on just that one negative aspect. That's all. All the buttons two dollars. This is good. This is great. I'm for human rights. I'm for telling the truth. I'm for all of those things that he he talked about. He got a free character sketch along with his $20 print. It's a limited edition piece of artwork. I'm an artist, Johnny Myers. He got 14 presidents, three congressmen, and one chairman of the 1944 Democratic National Convention. <laughs> All right, then. In a quick sketch, you break it down to a half a mile per hour. I'll draw you while you're walking by. <laughs> I think they're a little bit more hesitant to talk about AIDS than they should be. The point is, it's a global crisis. It's an emergency. It has to be addressed. I think the Democrats will do a lot better with it than the Republicans certainly have for the last eight years. The hopeful sign is that a black man can run for president in the United States and actually have a dream that will come true in the very near future. We spoke and said a lot for everybody, not just one race and spoke for everybody. What's it called? A body puppet. You just tug it, right? It's a brand new product. Thank you. So how did you enjoy yesterday? Oh, I thought it was absolutely marvelous and inspiring. I think it was. I think the most inspiring thing was how Jesse Daxon took a crowd that was not quite unified and was able to touch the hearts and the minds of every one of them bring together in a concentrated effort. So it was exciting. You actually see the rainbow. And this has not happened in politics in, um, just in recent years. Well, he has a remarkable ability to make people feel what he's feeling. So the enthusiasm is great. I thought he did a great job. Well, I was originally committed to Al Gore and now with Dukakis, so I'm committed there and I think I would stay there, but I certainly respect his positions. You know, I'm a person of conviction. I came on board with Dukakis uh, before California and I remain with him. Jackson will be a nominated, and, but I don't think you know, it'll go that far. I think it'll be a nominated and second when the vote's taken, I think Dukakis will come through. Who is y'all? Black guy wants to run for mayor. He was up in Frederick. Loose and strings and got my ass in New York. Well, I was working in New Orleans, hanging loose and being cool. Just got back from two weeks in Boston, traveling with the Duke. Oh, really? Anybody trading buttons? Where'd you get that? Oh, there's only 25 of those in the world. That's good. To watch what happens tonight. We still don't know what's going to happen. Whether the clock is made period or Jackson, they're trying to. Well, but they're trying to persuade other, you know, super delegates and others. Any new? Yeah. Nail biting. I'd rather stomp on a rumor. Joe, by the way, is a <laughs> 
Jackson Delegate. I'm a Jackson Delegate, and we won, I think we won 10 points out of 13, so that's a pretty good batting average. We raised some important issues. I think people at least thought about it, gave a clear signal that those are important issues. Maybe next time the Democratic Party will take a stand on them. So that's what we think. And there's going to be a whole other set of signs come out after the nomination. And then we'll have signs. I'll bring it up now for every single person. It is with a sense of singular honor and consummate humility that I stand before you tonight to place in nomination the name of that one person in this vast nation of ours who has roused the moral conscience of the populace and our party. A man who has shown us the way to thaw the ice of indifference, smug self-satisfaction, and meanness that too long has masked the heartbeat of America. And I am inordinately proud and uniquely privileged to offer in nomination for the office of President of the United States, Jesse Lewis Jackson. of the Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson for President of the United States of America. Saludos cariñosos a todos los puertorriqueños donde quiera que estén. A los dominicanos, cubanos y a mis hermanos en idioma y cultura. We Puerto Ricans and Latino Americans are too often not perceived as citizens because of differences in culture and language. Jesse Jackson understands our reality. He includes us in the common effort to eliminate poverty and ignorance. America needs Jesse Jackson, and Jesse Jackson is good for America. Saying, are you threatening to leave the party? We said, no, we're threatening to stay in the party. You're not going to get rid of us that easily. So we need to move up within the party. And hopefully, we'll, a lot of us will come back in 1992 as super delegates. We want Washington What happened to. Michael Dukakis has spent his whole life closing the gap between what is and what might have been. He'll stand and deliver for us. He'll build the bridge to tomorrow for us. And that's why I'm so proud to say he ought to be president and to place in nomination the name of the 41st president of the United States, Michael Dukakis from Massachusetts. I would like to hear some specific talk about the types of policy appointments he'll make. 6,000 policy appointed positions that the president can make. And we need to hear, or I would love to hear, and the people that put me in as a delegate would like to hear the type of people that he would have that would execute the programs that would give us a housing and a national health care program and jobs and things of that nature. So in that regard, I'm disappointed, but I am glad that we have a dialogue and that our staff people are talking, and hopefully by the time we leave, we'll have those types of answers. Seven votes for Michael Dukakis and 18 votes for Jesse Jackson. Yeah. What happened to your votes, huh? Yes. That's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. I don't know. 
there's been different things said. No, no, no. He's not, he said when he was, he was, he said squarely, he was touching people who hadn't been touched. He did not compromise. He was very, very firm in his uh, orders to us that we were to stand tall and not compromise. And with his credibility as a leader and his stature as a man, he was able to convince most of us, if not all of us, that we would go to the floor just to raise the conscience of America, have the debate, because before we could not even have had the opportunity to debate. And that means that we're winning every day and we are keeping hope alive. You guys can't be mellow. California's got a bad reputation for being too mellow. Let's show them what we got, huh? Tonight, for Jesse Jackson, 122 votes. For Michael Dukakis, the nominating margin, 235 votes. extremely disappointed uh, but as long as Jesse Lewis Jackson keeps coming back I'll keep coming back and one day we're gonna do it the only thing that I can say is that a Dukakis without Jackson is like a train, train without, without tracks. tracks and you know what it cannot roll <laughs> political structure calls for compromise and negotiation. You never get everything you want, but you don't lose everything as well. When we look back over the gains we've made over the previous 20, 24 years, they've simply been phenomenal. Jesse Jackson has helped to pave the way for someone else to be president if it does not come to him. Fannie Lou Hamer paved the way for Jesse Jackson. Shirley Chisholm helped to pave the way for others. And that's what we're all doing, making our society a little better each day with what we're doing.
States. We went to do now. Some will be upset. I think, and some will be disappointed. But I think they'll understand after we explain the situation. As Barbara Joy said, let's come to reason. And I think we can reason. We will transmit this country greater, stronger, prouder, and more beautiful than it was transmitted to us. That is my pledge to you, my fellow Democrats, and that is my pledge to you, my fellow Americans. Thank you all very, very much. pleased, though, at the speech that the governor just made. He said everything that Jesse has been saying. Jesse said all along that he had set the agenda for this election, and I think he's done just that. But I think the important thing is we don't have our man, but we have the ideals that our man stood for. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, substitutes are never as good as the real thing, but at least that's something to work for. feel gracious, we feel inclusive about the whole thing. I think that's We're what the thing is. We're proud of the Reverend. We are. We're very proud of him. He was a winner, a victor. We're very proud also of, of uh, Governor Dukakis for his nomination and his eventual win. And his understanding of the importance of Reverend Jackson in the Democratic Party. Absolutely. Okay? Thank you. I've got to get this souvenir. I'm too controlled, I'm too mature, I'm too clear to be angry at these t-shirts or cotton and polyester. They will not shrink in the wash. You can get them. They're $10. On the back, we deserve R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Jesse Jackson is one of the key players in the Democratic Party. And I think in order for the Democratic Party to win, Jesse gets, has to get out there and do the same thing that he did uh, in the primaries. And I think that he'll go out there and do it too. I think that Reverend Jackson had the kind of dignity and respect that the delegates deserve in the President of the United States. And I just hate that uh, he had to do all the compromising. hopeful, to be excited, to know that we are close to where we're going, a long way from where we started, and in our lifetime, you and I 
will be in the White House. We'll be there. What are my objectives? Expand the party. The DNC opens up this morning. There'll be an additional vice chair. 18 new positions, all of which we recommend. Expansion. Inclusion. As we look at the legislative agenda, and this is so basic when we go across this country, Kanye's bill, on-site, same-day registration, Take the pain out of registration. We'll be supporting the Dellums Bill on South Africa. And that's progress. A support for the DC statehood bill, and that's two senators. And that's progress. A commitment to end the abandonment of the homeless. A commitment to end the abandonment of our children. A commitment to reach out across lines of, of race and sex and religion and affirm everybody's Americanness. It's time for a fundamental change in direction. And I'm going to tell you one reason why I want to be close enough to serve and far enough away to challenge. Because it requires a combination of good leadership and street heat. It's that combination. It's that combination. It's that combination.